हेलो वेलकम बैक फॉर आर डेवलपमेंट ना वेन आई से आर डेवलपमेंट योर्स माइंड एंड द चैप्टर डेवलपमेंट लेट्स कंटिन्यू व्हाट आर द अदर क्राइटेरियाज ऑन विच वी से दिस कंट्री इज डेवलप्ड और नॉट डेवलप्ड अपार्ट फ्रॉम इनकम सो द फर्स्ट टॉपिक आफ्टर दैट टॉपिक इज इनकम एंड अदर क्राइटेरिया नाउ I told you that if you take an average, there is a problem. The problem is disparities, distribution. So let's see what are the other things we can check out. We need to check the health status of a country and education. And for education, we see literacy rate and net attendance ratio. Let's have definition of these two terms. Literacy rate simply means anyone in a country who is able to read or write a simple statement in any of the language is called literate. Remember the definition. Now, what is net attendance ratio? Let's take an example to understand this term. So, if I have 100 students or 100 children in my colony, out of 100, how many of them are attending school? that is called net attendance ratio i'll take another example to make it very simple for you suppose your class is having a strength of 30 students and i come to your class and ask you what is your attendance today so you will say attendance is 27 how many are absent three so your net attendance is 27 we consider net attendance ratio and literacy rate for education of a country to check what is the education status of a country there is one thing which we call infant mortality rate now if i have the data of infant mortality rate i am going to talk about the health status what is this infant mortality rate simply if a child dies below the age of one and the ratio is considered per thousand we call it as infant mortality rate number of children that die before the age of one year as proportion of thousand live birth is called infant mortality rate i am taking this again apart from income you need to check health and education of a country to term them developed or developing let's move ahead and check it out how do we talk about public health when we are talking about development see public health is public facilities now who should give you public facilities now when i say public facility it is coming from government and it is for everyone parks schools road and everything now just take an example if you are a rich person whether you are in rural area or urban area, it's not going to matter. Can you start a school for your own? No. If you are very Amir, can you make a road for yourself? No. If you are very Amir, can you make a hospital for yourself? No. So who should give these things? It should come from government. Now, if you have money, what they want to say is, if you have money, your money cannot buy a pollution-free environment. Your money cannot buy and cannot protect you from the disease. Your money cannot protect you from the attack of foreigners, for which there has to be some governance and it should come from the government. So our government or anyone's government in the world plays major role in public health so having money is not going to tell you that you are developed there has to be something else which actually makes you develop that is your health and your education now we take an example of a state kerala and they are saying kerala is having a less low infant mortality rate why because their primary health sector is doing very good similar way there are states where pds system is rocking it's working well pds is public distribution system so if ration shops are opening regularly people who are poor who lies under the low income bracket are able to go and purchase the goods and services from 
the ration shops and the development is happening. We move ahead and we talk about something wherein your health can be judged and we can actually comment on your health by just checking body mass index. It's a very simple formula. It comes for three marks and the easiest one. They say you take your weight in kg and then divide your weight by the square of your height. If that figure comes out to be lesser than 18.5, then you are malnourished or undernourished. And if the figure is above 25, then you are obeyed. Mote hai aap. Healthy nahi hai. This is what is BMI. It comes for three marks and one of the easiest topic in this chapter. I move ahead and find out about the Human Development Index and Report. Now, Human Development Report is published by UNDP, United Nations Development Program. And they say there is a problem with an average which has been given by the World Bank. So I am considering few other things. Those things are your health and education. But herein for health, they are not checking infant mortality, which is a part of it. But they are checking about longevity. When I say longevity, it is life expectancy. Simple definition, an average age of a person when he is born in that area. Now, every country ka life expectancy is hai. Just for your information, Japanese has got the highest life expectancy ratio. They take the other thing, which is education. Already we have seen the net attendance ratio. Now herein they are going to talk about the NAR, which is net attendance ratio. And apart from that, gross enrollment ratio. Gross enrollment ratio is total enrollment admissions in your school, higher secondary and above that. Logic hai na? Jitne zyada bachche aapke school mein rahenge aur higher sections mein rahenge utna acha aapka literacy rate hoga. And I'm just sharing a simple logic with you. Whenever you have a data in front of you which is in chart especially in your textbook in this chapter always look at literacy rate. The countries whose literacy rate is high you will see rest all the things are under control. For example, agar literacy rate Kerala ka 100% hai, to aap dekho ga ki unki infant mortality rate bohat hi kam hogi. Aur unka income higher level pe hoga. Kyunki zyada padhe likho ge, to zyada doctors, engineers, lawyers honge. Us hisap se you will going to take care of yourself, your family. So everything will be at place. So always whenever you have this kind of data, simply and directly go for literacy rate. And then you can crack on to the data and the questions. Third thing, which is again now here it becomes the lesser important part, which is standard of living and it is income. Now income when I say per capita income, it is normally checked in purchasing power parity. Simply means how much money you have in your hand. If you have more money, you can buy more things. Okay, so income is other criteria. So UNDP on the basis of health, education and incomes files up one report and as per that report we see whether the country is developed or developing here is in data of few countries 2017 and 2018 rank look where do we stand it's sad to see we are 130 in 2017 and now yes there is a jump there is a development we went to next level so in 2018 we were on the position of 129. Look at our neighbors. They are somewhere near us only. Nothing much better to them except Sri Lanka. They are doing far, far, far better than us. They were 76 in 2017 and now in 2018 they are 71. So their progress, their development is better than ours. But we are good, we are happy. Now we come to, whenever you are talking about development, there is one word which should be there in your head. And that is sustainability. एक बहुत अच्छी statement आपके किताब में वो statement है this world which we have got is not been inherited from our forefathers. It has been borrowed from our children. हिंदी में translate कर देता हूँ ये जो दुनिया हमें मिली है 
ये हमने अपने पूर्वजों से नहीं लिए हमने उधार लिए अपने बच्चों से लॉजिक इज दैट वॉट एवर रिसोर्सेस यू हैव दे आर लिमिटेड एंड इफ यू आर गोइंग टू यूज दैम रेकलेसली विदाउट जुडिशियस प्लानिंग दे आर गोइंग टू गेट एग्जॉस्टेड एंड इफ दे गेट एग्जॉस्टेड वॉट इज दैट योर फोर फादर्स हैव सीन विल नॉट बी देयर फॉर योर चिल्ड्रेन जस्ट कीप दिस इन माइंड एंड हेयर इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ग्राउंड वाटर बेटा इंडिया में ग्राउंड वाटर सबसे ज्यादा रेकलेसली यूज होता है विच इज अ फ्रेश वाटर एंड वेर डू वी यूज दिस ग्राउंड वाटर फॉर ड्रिंकिंग फॉर इरीगेशन एंड वॉट इज द इम्पैक्ट इम्पैक्ट इज यू विल सी द वेल्स द लेवल ऑफ ग्राउंड वाटर हैज डिक्रीज टू फोर मीटर सिंपली इफ आई से दिस वाटर लेवल If it was in 1900 at this level, it has come down to here. It is showing reckless use of ग्राउंड वाटर ना इफ दैट गेट्स एग्जॉस्टेड यू आर गोइंग टू स्पॉइल द फ्यूचर ऑफ योर्स एज वेल एज योर चिल्ड्रेन बिकॉज इट्स एन नॉन रेन्यूएबल रिसोर्स एनी नॉन रेन्यूएबल रिसोर्स वेदर इट इज ग्राउंड वाटर और फॉसिल फ्यूज दे आर लिमिटेड इन नेचर एंड इफ दे आर लिमिटेड यू नीड टू प्लान एंड यूज judiciously see there is a statement in a geography book uh, it has been said by gandhi ji and he says ki there is enough for everyone's need but not for one's greed to puri duniya ke liye resources kafi hain par kisi ek ke lalach ke liye kafi nahi hai so we need to plan and use the resources in such a way that they do not get exhausted they replenish and our children have these resources for their future see rapid economical development and industrialization will consume these fossil fuels these non renewable resources but then if you use them properly and if you plan their use then i think their exhaustibility can be delayed the more it is delayed it is better for us and for our future so always have a sustainable plan always have a sustainable development in your textbook we have another topic based on the same ground water level it talks about petroleum see india is dependent for petroleum on west asian nations aap sochiye ki aap wo west asian nation hai aur main hu india i am dependent on you when this resource petroleum will start depleting aap apna ghar bachaoge ki mera bachaoge aap apna hi bachaoge to you will stop exporting the petrol and who will get impact of that india the countries which are dependent on you so always plan your resources properly this finishes our chapter development i'll request you to keep revising and keep smiling